Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Blessed Easter to you all. Thank you so very much for taking the time to be with us today. Whether you're a part of our Petra family or a visitor watching the stream, we are so very glad you're with us. Our service is going to be uh, printed on the screen. You can also access a service folder in the link below. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop those in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them promptly. Again, thank you so very much for being with us today. Our opening hymn today is going to be uh, the first four verses of hymn 720, Christ Jesus Lay in Death Strong Bands, verses 1 to 4. May God richly bless our time in his word today. We continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, on this joyful day we celebrate for our Lord Jesus has passed over from death to life. We join with the church throughout the world 
in recalling and celebrating his victory over death and our deliverance from the bondage of sin and the dark and darkness to everlasting life and light. May the light of Christ, who has risen in glory from the dead, scatter all the darkness of our hearts and minds. Amen. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. By his wounds, we are healed both now and forevermore. The light of Christ rises in glory, overcoming the darkness of sin and death. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This Easter morning, we come before the true God because of his mercy to us in Christ. Lord of life, I confess that I have sinned against you. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts, words, and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest this night in peace. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We live now in his peace and rise each new day to serve him. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We continue now with the final three verses of Christ Jesus lay in death strong bands. Hymn 720 verses 5 to 7. <laughs> Our first scripture lesson for this Easter day comes to us from the book of the prophet Jonah. Jonah chapter 2, beginning at verse 2. 
He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We continue now with the first four verses of I Know That My Redeemer Lives, hymn 152, verses 1 through 4. Our gospel lesson for today is the Easter account by St. Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 1. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. 
He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then, go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So, the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. We continue with the final four verses of I Know That My Redeemer Lives. We join now in confessing the faith using the words of the Nicene Creed as it's printed on page 7 in the service folder. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with our next hymn, our hymn of the day, hymn 417, I Am But a Stranger Here, hymn 417. Grace, peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Many of you who know me at all will not be surprised when I tell you that when I went out to Walmart a couple of days ago to get a couple of grocery things quick for the house, I diverted to something admittedly non-essential. I picked up one of these. It's variety. The variety is a grandiflora. It's, lo it's called Love. Uh, first bred about 1980, give or take, depending on who you look at in terms of sourcing. It's a really, really pretty bicolor. Red on the inside, white on the outside of the petal. Really gorgeous. I'd had one for a number of years here, not long after we moved up here to Sauk Rapids, and then a couple years ago it just conked out on me. And now I have a replacement. I was very excited. But as I was driving home, it, it also illustrated something to myself. Here we are, in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of 
stay at home and limited movement and, and all of that stuff, and I'm still able to go out and buy a rose. I'm still able to go out and get this, which, which I hope in, in, in a few months is going to be blooming fabulously in my yard. It illustrates something that is probably good for us to remember. That here in America, the majority of us, maybe even a vast majority of us, are going to weather this pandemic a whole lot more comfortably than we'd like to admit. Now, I don't want to minimize the real suffering that is out there. There are some people working ungodly difficult hours in ungodly difficult circumstances trying to keep people healthy or get them healthy. And we thank those nurses and doctors and other medical professionals and anybody involved in that. But the reality is, is most of us are going to spend most of our time in this pandemic here in America sitting comfortably in homes, warm homes, plenty of food, plenty of toys. And for many of us, our biggest frustrations and headaches are going to be, my kids are going crazy or I'm bored. We have a lot of comfort here in America. And it's something to to be perfectly frank, to be thankful to God for. And it's also something to be careful about. Because one of those subtle idols that we have is also one of the more powerful ones that we have in our culture, which is the idol of comfort. Temporal comfort. In many ways, we have it pretty easy. And it's easy for us to want to continue to have it easy. And we're going to talk about some of the spiritual implications about that. But first, we want to read our text for today. It's from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above. Where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And there are a number of, of important truths we, we can pull out of this text right away. The first, right away off the top of the bat, verse 1, Since then you have been raised with Christ. We have life in Him. We Christians have life with the living Lord, who is Himself alive, living and seated, quite literally in heaven, at the right hand of the Father. Christ is going to come again. He's going to come again to take us to be with him in glory. Verse 4 again, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Great, comforting, incredible truths. And then there's the encouragement, maybe even you could say admonishment in verses 1 and 2. Set your hearts on things above. Set your minds on things above. Not on earthly things. And here the Christian is going to seek to try to keep some balance. That's why we just sang the hymn we did, I am but a stranger here, heaven is my home. Because that hymn reminds us very, very well 
the reality, the important reality, that in the end, our final destination, our final home, is not here on this third rock from the sun. Our final destination, through faith in Jesus Christ, is heaven. And live that way. Set your hearts and minds on things above. Don't get so sucked into the earthly things that you lose track of or lose hold of the eternal treasure you have in Jesus Christ. That encouragement in various different fashions and in various different forms is found all over the Bible. Just taking a look here at a few quick verses. Psalm 90, verses 10 and 12. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. For they quickly pass and we fly away. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days. We have a limited amount of time in this world. And... As good spiritual stewards of that time, we want to manage that time as best we can. Don't get so caught up in the comforts of this life that you waste the time. For the day is coming, Jesus himself said in the New Testament, when no one can work, night's coming. When work and life must cease. Or our, our second portion of Scripture, Luke 14, 28 to 29. Jesus says himself, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you. Christians plan for the future. Ultimately, an eternal future. And, and yes, Christians do plan right now as being part of being good stewards, again, of the time and the talent and the treasure God has given us. We want to plan well so that we can serve one another and our God well this side of heaven. That's why churches have budgets. That's why churches have ministry plans. That's why congregations encourage themselves and one another to support the ministry so that we can keep doing ministry. But ultimately, in the end, that planning has an eye even farther down the road than a one-year plan, a five-year plan, or a ten-year target. We're looking to eternity. We're looking to eternity and what that brings. And so, yes, Christians plan for the future. We plan for the future looking to what our God has waiting for us and, and living that way. Living as people who, who are going to be here in this world only temporally, a short time. Living as people in this world who, who have something bigger and better coming down the road than anything we have in this life. And, and that's something, again, we're reminded of in, in Matthew 25. This is interesting. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here's what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. Who here remembers the broader story? It, it's the parable of the talents. He had this master who gives three servants of his some money to invest, to manage, while he's gone. And the first two go about their job faithfully. They do their best with what they have and are blessed with, with, with a good return and are commended for their efforts. But the third one, he doesn't even try. He's done the calculus in his head. He would much rather in his own mind, face the potential wrath of his master and, 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 and stay in the comfort he had than, than risk 
investing the money. And, and, and he doesn't, he ultimately gets in trouble because he's not doing what his master asked him to do. He wasn't faithful. He just buried the money. And the master calls him lazy because he didn't use his time well. He didn't use his gifts well. And that's one of the dangers, too, of, of living in a comfortable life, in a comfortable existence, in, in this comfortable place we call America. Wasted potential. God has blessed us with so many different gifts. Each one of us has something. And yet, too often, too many waste the potential failing to launch, spending an extra decade in mom and dad's home, or meandering their way through life, not looking to accomplish anything in particular. And they waste the gift, or gifts possibly, that God had given. All in the name of comfort. One of the sad but common things you'll see if you really look around is that there are a whole lot of people that would rather live in comfortable mediocrity than to reach for the better. Than to work for something greater. Than to, in Christian terms, walk the road that leads home to heaven. That idol of temporal comfort is dangerous because it's so comfortable. We know it. it it's, it's, it's like an old blanket. May, sure, may have some frayed edges and a hole or two, but I know this blanket. I've had this blanket for 25 years. And instead of getting something newer and nicer and warmer, I'm just going to stick with what I know. That idol of comfort is dangerous because slowly and seductively it can woo us away from something bigger and better that God and Christ would offer us. We Christians need to continue to plan for the future. Again, Colossians 3, 1-2. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Jesus says in Matthew 6, Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven for where your treasure is. There your heart will be also. Look down the road. Take the long view. Plan for the future, particularly for the future that comes after the life in this world. God in Christ would have incredible things for you. Plan for the future. Look down the road. Set your hearts on things above. Do not store for yourself treasures on earth. They, they're going to go away. Do not hold on to them too tightly. Be willing to let them go. For the greater treasure that you have in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And, and that's one of the things that we need to remember. As Christians plan for the future, we need to remember that there are times when we need to be willing to let things go, even though for many people it is admittedly very scary. It's a very scary thing to let go of comfort, even if that comfort is, well, to put it one way, less than optimal. Again, another reality of, of human psychology that is so interesting and really sad is, is how people not only will accept comfortable mediocrity, but they'll also very often accept dysfunction, conflict, sometimes even abuse, because it's what they know. 
And there's a certain level of comfort in what you know. Even if there's something better and healthier and more free out there, many people will choose to stay in the comfort of whatever it is that they know, whether it's dysfunctional or abusive. But Jesus calls us to freedom. He tells us to not be afraid. It's what he did on Easter. As our Savior encourages us in Colossians 3 to set our hearts on things above, to look to the future, he does so by also encouraging us that we don't need to be afraid of the future. You can let these things go. You can, you can let these comforts go. Let them fall by the wayside because your Savior, Jesus Christ, has something greater and better waiting for you. Back to Matthew chapter 28 here. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Uh, first, just note here really quick, Jesus is doing exactly what he promised. This is part of a plan. This wasn't just a happy accident. As much as I like Bob Ross, and as much as people I know, my wife in particular, as much as they like Bob Ross, this wasn't a happy accident. This was a plan. Jesus had made the promise, the prediction, the scriptures had made the promise in the prediction that the Christ, the Messiah, would rise. Verse 7, then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I've told you. So, the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Jesus, along with his Father and the Holy Spirit, have an incredible future planned for you. And just as Jesus did 2,000 years ago, so he tells you now, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to walk into the future with him. Do not be afraid to cast away the idols of this life and the baubles and charms of this life and cling tightly onto him. Hold on to him because he has something awesome waiting for you. As I said, this is part of a plan. This is part of an ancient plan that God had set into motion way back at the beginning. Paul reminds us in Galatians chapter 4, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Why can we set our hearts and minds on things above? How can we do that confidently? How can we even set aside fear and uncertainty, even in this day and even in this month, even in 2020? How can we set aside fear and uncertainty and follow our Savior Jesus confidently? Because this Almighty God, this gracious Savior, has a plan for you, for your eternity. His plan for you is that you would be with him in perfect peace and perfect grace and perfect joy. Fear gone. Pain gone. Grief gone forever. We can set our hearts on things above, not on earthly things. We can let go of the temporal and hold on to the eternal because in eternity we have Jesus. His grace and His love. 
always there. Christ has perfectly planned your future. Connected to him through faith in him. Your best days are still coming. May his resurrection and may the joy of Easter bring you confidence in these days. Hope in these uncertain weeks. He lives. And through faith in him, so do you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, risen Savior and King, you have won salvation and made atonement for the sin of the world. You live, and through faith in you, so do we. We ask that you would help us to boldly follow you, to cast aside all things that would take our focus away from you. Help us to confidently follow you, even if it means setting down those things that right now make us a little bit more comfortable. Help us to not get distracted by the, the baubles and the charms of this world. Help us to not get too attached to the treasures of this life that we end up losing in the end, our eternal treasure in you. We ask that your gospel and good news, that your resurrection would bring hope to many today and in the coming weeks. Because you live, so do we. And because you live, one day we will live with you in eternity. Watch over us this week. Watch over your church. Bless its work in your name. We ask these things as we ask all things in your name, joining now in the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue at this time with the offering period of the service. Again, as always during these weeks, please consider reaching out to family and friends, saying hello, sharing encouragement and love with one another. And then once you've done that, come back to the service and join us in our next hymn.
We continue with the closing prayer and blessing. Eternal Lord of life, through your Son you have given your people the brightness of your light. Kindle in our hearts and minds a holy desire to shine with the brightness of Christ rising until we feast at the banquet of eternal light. Through Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you today and always. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. We'll close our service this Easter day with our final hymn, hymn 141, At the Lamb's High Feast. We sing hymn 141. Again, thank you so much for being with us today. May the light of the risen Lord bless and keep you, not just on this Easter day, but in the days and weeks to come. Be well, be safe, and Lord willing, we'll see you again very soon.